Let's bring in Monica Crowley, who is a very astute analyst. She's a Republican. Um, she's a PhD, worked for Richard Nixon in his latter days. Uh, you've seen her on Fox News and other uh, operations. Let's go to Sessions first. No surprise, he's out, correct? Yes, and it's great news, and it's been in the works for a very long time. You know, Jeff Sessions has been very effective for the president in certain areas, like illegal immigration and some other things, but he's been extremely weak and, in fact, non-existent due to his recusal on the one existential threat to this president, and that's the Mueller Russia investigation. So because he recused himself, which most people agree Sessions had to do, but because he allowed the recusal to be defined so broadly, Bill, it took him completely out of the game and totally infuriated the president. So the president requested his resignation. He accepted it uh, today. And now what we're going to have is the acting attorney general overseeing Mueller and that investigation. And once the new Senate is sworn in after the first of the year where we have the big majority, the Republicans have an, an expanded majority there, then no matter who the president uh, nominates to be the new AG, will then take the reins of the investigation. Okay. Um, and the guy, uh, I don't know him, um, Matthew Whitaker, you know, mm -hmm. he's been a career uh, guy in the Justice Department. He he'll do pretty much what he's told to do, I assume. Um, mm, I, I, I told somebody on the radio today, you don't know, do a lot of radio for killing the SS. I said, watch, keep your eye on Chris Christie. You know, Christie wants that job, that attorney general job. And uh, President Trump might give it to him. You know, Giuliani, I don't think so. I don't, I don't think that's going to happen. But Christie's still around, uh, maybe. It's all speculation. So how about the election last night? Um, I, I bloviated, uh, I'm sure. Uh, I hope you were doing something that I didn't bore you too badly. Um, but did I say anything that was wrong or outrageous or anything like that? No, I think your analysis was right on. I mean, it was a mixed result. But actually, when you look at the fact that the Republican Party, the party that controls the White House, lost control of the House, people were predicting a blue wave. And in fact, that blue wave was much hyped and in the end, non-existent. It was more like a blue trickle and actually historically unimpressive one at that, Bill, because when you look at Bill Clinton in 94, look at Barack Obama in 2010, they hemorrhaged dozens and yeah, dozens of seats. Yeah, Obama lost 63. 63 uh, seats, yes. Right. And Bill and then, Clinton lost eight Senate seats in his first midterm. So right. by historical standards, actually, Trump came out Pretty well. Pretty well. All right. yeah. but why, why, why does Trump, why does he have to do the Republican people who ran for the House who lost, like Barbara Comstock in Virginia, Mia Long in Utah, and go, ha, ha, you didn't want my help. Look what happened to you. <laughs> why, well, part, why part of that he, is his personality, Bill, right? I mean, but he, didn't. But he, I said the reason that he lost was because women don't like that. They don't. They kind of don't, don't like that in your face stuff. Well, that's true. But he's an equal opportunity slayer. So yeah, he identified a couple of women who didn't embrace him. But there were some guys who didn't embrace him and went down in flames. Yeah, also. but why does he have to I, do that? I mean, because that's because, what caused some why. people to vote against you. him. Well, but that, that's partly true. But I would say this. This is more of a warning shot for 2020 because where he put in his time, resources and star power, the vast majority of those candidates won. And what he is now saying to everybody is I'm liberated now because the next election is mine. And the smart Republican candidates who embraced me did very well. So going into the next election cycle, assuming the economy stays strong, etc., the smart Republican candidates should also embrace him because yeah. it will serve uh, them very well. He's got the party well. now. I mean, any Republican has got to know you can't go rogue against Donald Trump. I mean, you can't. Um, so if you're going to be a Republican and you're going to want to sit in the Senate or the House, you're going to have to play ball with Donald Trump. I mean, that's just it. Same thing with uh, Schumer and Pelosi on the other side. That's, that's you know, right, Bill. And, they'll and cut you your know, money off. Way, yeah. By the way, this also extends to Democrats who want to run against him in 2020. I mean, the lesson of 2016 and even the lesson of this year is that anybody who gets up in the face of Donald Trump and tries to oppose him 
he makes mincemeat out of them. I mean, if Michael Bloomberg really thinks he's got an honest chance at Donald Trump, debating I Trump, for Mayor Bloomberg, I, look, Bloomberg the, can get a little, he can get a little feisty, yeah, and I think he would if uh, if he were on the stage with Donald Trump. Bloomberg's only about five foot six, so uh, yes, uh, you know the height differential. But he's, Bloomberg he's, can he'll he, he give it back to you. Now. What? Uh, he's going to go up against the alpha male of Donald Trump. Look, we saw what Trump was able to do with 17 professional Republicans. Yeah, but he caught them all Clinton. by surprise. He, you know, I was there. I saw it when he when he went after uh, Jeb Bush. Goes, you're boring. My Bush won't. What? <laughs> what? And all of us we were watching went, whoa! Now, 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 they're ready, and he's a president now. He's not. Just a citizen wanting to be president. You're he's got right, that mail. Now they're not going to stop him. He's going to be more dangerous. Right. He'll because he'll have Uncle Joe if it's Biden. Him. He'll he'll make fun of him. But there's not that big a age difference between Trump and Biden in five <laughs> years. Um, but anyway, the the message that Trump sends is basically, you better play ball with me. I'm the Godfather. I'm the Don. And if you don't. Then you're going to go the way of me along. Um, but I'm not sure really that helps him in the court of public opinion. I think that Donald Trump is still the only bullhorn that matters. And I think that not. was proven out in the election cycle. And I think he's telling his fellow Republicans, if you're smart, you will not run away from me. You will embrace me and I will I will shine upon you. Remember, the political universe is only one son and it's Donald Trump. OK. Um, shifting gears, uh, were you at Fox News from the beginning? I, I can't remember whether you came on a little I later. Was. Okay, was. so you were there when it started. So yeah. you watch, you watch my entire career from the beginning. You didn't know me before Fox News. We met because I used you on a factor and stuff. But you, you saw what I did over a twenty-year period. Okay. Yes. Would you say that I was a pretty tough interviewer? Yes, I was yelled at by you many a time on the air, but not yelled you at, always... <laughs> challenged, <laughs> challenged, challenged. But you know what? You always used to say, "Look, I do not want to waste the viewers' time." That's right. We are here to educate them. We are here to enlighten them and to entertain them. But we are here not to waste their time and to advance the conversation. Right. And, and so you saw my interviews with Hillary Clinton, Bill Clinton, Barack Obama. All of that. What's the yes. difference between what I did and what Jim Acosta is doing? Well, frankly, uh, Bill, when I saw the exchange between Trump and Acosta today, I laughed out loud and I've been tweeting about it because it was such a presidential slap to Acosta and CNN and long overdue the way they treat him, the office of the presidency and frankly, anybody who supports the president. You know, having having worked for President Nixon in the early 1990s and talked to him at that time about the way he was treated by people like Dan Rather, who you mentioned, and others, the disrespect for the president, particularly Republican presidents, the difference now is that the level of activism and intensity on the part of the left-wing media toward this president and aimed against him, everything he stands for and everybody who supports him is unprecedented. That you, exchange was so disrespectful today that was. I would have been disappointed if Trump didn't bitch slap him. Well, I, I mean, when, when Acosta wouldn't give the microphone to the White House aide, I thought that Trump might have called security over. I mean, I was, I was going, whoa, you know, this is getting there. Trump, I, you could see him thinking, what, am I, what should I do, what should I do, what should I do? Now, do you agree with me that if you were advising Trump, uh, you'd pull a credential for Acosta? Yes, at least temporarily. You got to give guys like that or any reporter who behaves that way a timeout. And a that's time the only way that a timeout. You got to send him to the corner. <laughs> and the thing that they would hate the most, Bill, is being stripped of that credential because they prize their access to the president, to all of his people more but than But that's a book else. contract, Monica. That's that's an appearance on Colbert. That's that's a guaranteed uh, Sunday morning appearance. Uh, you know, 
Akash is uh, making money. He's gonna. The, you make him a martyr, and that you would in in left wing circles. I wouldn't care, by the way. I want information flow, and Jim Acosta is impeding impeding that flow. That's why I'd pull it. Okay, I, and you know, but what? you make him a martyr thing. if you pull it. What? Yeah, but you, but here's the thing, Bill. So you make him a martyr. So what? I mean, yeah, he'll go on, you know, Colbert and, and whatever, but they're all talking to each other. And what happened today is the entire press corps, not just Acosta, who was the most egregious, uh, but Peter Alexander and, and a lot of them were so antagonistic, so dishonest, so hostile to him today that they gave the president the ammunition that he wanted. He is never as good as he is when he's got a foil. Oh, he loved it. He didn't want to get Anthony off the stage, Close right? Yeah, absolutely Clinton. right. Yep. And the woman from NPR uh, with the uh, nationalism, white nationalism stuff, I thought Trump had a, that was his best answer. He goes, that's a racist question. That's a racist right? question. You're baiting me. You're race baiting. He didn't say. I would have said. I said, it's a racist que question, which Trump said. And then I would have explained. He said, you're race baiting right now. Okay? I said I was a nationalist. It had nothing to do with white nationalism, nothing to do with racism at all. You put that tag on it unfairly. So it, it, the dynamic is that he has the pulpit, the president does. I thought Trump today won that battle with the press corps. But I don't think that we want to turn the White House press corps into a carnival, Monica. And that's how it's going right now. It's a carnival now. Well, I mean, if we're going to place blame, Bill, I mean, it's these reporters' faults. They make no pretense of being fair. They're not like you. They're not like old school journalists who are trying to seek information in a fair, dispassionate and honest way. I mean, reporters like you are few and far between these days. Those folks in the White House are outright activists on the left trying to destroy and undermine this president. So you know what? Frankly, he has no choice but to fight back because no, previously I mean, I I I've absolutely said it from the jump. Gotten, he has you know, to fight crushed. back. Just, and I'll reemphasize this one more time, they are ordered to do this. This isn't an activism that's born out of some kind of indignation. They are all liberal. That's who's hired at CNN and MSNBC and NBC News. Liberals, across the board. Okay, but they are ordered. Their point of view has to be anti-Trump or they're going to be replaced. So people ought to know that. Monica Crowley, everyone. Thank you very much, Monica, as always. Uh, good to see you.